Beautiful. Now I have, uh, you know, in our in our teachings, you know, we're just real specific on measurements with the hands and the body. And two real specific things that I'd like to talk to you today is, is the two measurements or kind of the benchmarks in the golf swing is where exactly is the is the center of gravity in the golf swing and where exactly let's let's just talk about that first where is the center of gravity well with a man it's higher than a woman because women have heavier hips than men. face the camera here you see the center of gravity is basically the navel mm -hmm. now if i wanted to lift you i'd grab you slightly below because you got heavy shoulders mm -hmm. and a woman you'd have to Take a little higher. Take a little higher? Yeah. So really the center part of our golf swing for teaching instruction purposes is just about at your navel, right? Right. Center of gravity. See, it can be an inch of bull in, but inch below it's according to the width of your shoulders and the width of your hips. Okay. If you've got heavy hips and narrow shoulders, you got a lower, a lower center. So it'll be down here. If you got higher, it'll be a little higher up. I understand? Well not everybody can have a figure like me, so that's right. <laughs> okay, well look. Now, a real critical thing that I'd like to talk to you about, and this is a, an angle that not many people talk about, is, is like the location of the spine and the center of the swing. Okay. Now, the location of the spine, if you would take this club and put the sole of the club underneath your chin like this. Now, you're not going to duck that down like that, but you couldn't get your arm below the chin, could you? Could be against your body, it'd come into your eye. All right, explain that again now. The position of your chin has got to be a military position. All right. Not this way. Not this way. But back this way. Mm -hmm. Now, I could get my arm under here, kind of. Mm -hmm. But I can't get it there, it'd be hitting my nose. Right. So when you make a, an address position, and you bend from the ball and socket joints of the hip, you must maintain two curves. The end curve and the small of the back right here and, and this the end curve. curve at the base of your neck. Like now if you break that end curve up there or you break that end curve here. So what are you doing? You're just retracting the derriere and it pulls your torso forward and down that way. You understand? Mm hmm So you have good balance. You go at it any other way, you don't have room enough between your chin and your chest to get your arm under it. Mm -hmm. See, when you're making that dress, you're coming down here, you're setting a space between the ground and your chin. Mm -hmm. Now, for that chin to stay there, the whole left side from the space between your shoulders, and put it in there, the space between my shoulders, I can't reach it. Right, right here. Huh? The space between my shoulder blades. Where, right here? No, in between, a touch of spine. Okay, right here. Yeah, a little, a little higher. A little right higher. there, right there. A little lower. Right there. That's seven. Between third. the shoulder. No, I don't want to right go there. Th yeah. Okay. Now, from right there, that whole left side has got to go underneath. You, you can't go that way. You, you, you're bending the axle. You go this way, and this side turns in. You had to shorten the hip joint, the knee joint, and then when you turn, the left side goes under like a wheel. But the the center of the golf swing is no the is center of the of the the plane mm -hmm. the swinging plane is the base of the the neck which is the seventh cervical that little knot right back there yeah right at the base of the now now I look here when you bend over go ahead mm -hmm. sit it on the ground now your arm is not on plane the shaft is not on plane the arm is hanging almost vertical to the ground. And this is below. This thing is below the, the plane. Understand? Mm -hmm. So you're not swinging the arms on plane. Mm -hmm. You're swinging the shaft on plane. Okay. But but what let I, me let me show you how that comes into bend. If I stood here this way, and I pull my arms up, that have a plane between the base of the neck and the ball, right? Mm -hmm. But that Between is where you, yeah, you'd have a this. you'd have okay. an arm club shaft plane, right? Mm -hmm. But when you sit it down like this, you have a an acute angle in here. That that would be a straight in, and this would be a this would be an obtuse, and that'd be an acute. You see, 
if you take it this way, that's less than 180, right? That's 180. Now this is less. This is less than 180. That's 180. That's less. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now when you come back, maintaining that position of the arm, shifting, cocking, your flexor, your femoris flexor here, which shortens up, your rectus femoris here, which makes the hip shorten, the hip shorten, you go below. Now you can turn that whole left side from the space between your shoulder blades down to the space between your derriere underneath the spine. See, the spine is like a railroad wheel. A railroad wheel does not have barons between the wheel and the shaft, you know? Mm -hmm. But Actually, on the spine, yeah, look, look. also, a lot of people, you know, I mean, we're basically trying to turn around our spine. Yeah, but you see, understand that if you try to make a movement right here and turn this way, you'll just break the shaft in two. But if that shaft is turning underneath like that, with the hips and shoulder moving, you go this way, you bend the, the axle. Mm -hmm. You've got to keep the axle where it is and bend. But if you took, if, if, if you like took me... Put, put a club around the back of your belt. Like this way? Yeah, put your elbows, act them both, mm -hmm. right angles. Now mm -hmm. just touch the, the stomach. Okay, now, I'm going to hold your head. Don't move your chin. Mm -hmm. Bend over. Now, this shin stays here. Mm -hmm. You're going to shift over to your right leg. You're flexing the left knee. You're flexing the hip joint. Mm -hmm. Now, that shortens the space between the shoulder and the ground. Mm -hmm. Now, this allows you to maintain this plane. If this doesn't shorten, this doesn't shorten, the shoulder will come up. And you come up there, you're not aiming at the bull. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it's that way. Now, you move your left hip forward, pick up your right heel, Drive your thigh and hip out that way and turn it over, okay? Mm -hmm. See, that allows you, or allows the wheel to go around the axle, or the shoulders to rotate around the spine on the oblique plane. Now, if you go through this way, you're not going to hit the ball. It's, that shoulder's got to come underneath the base of that neck, like that. Mm -hmm. and, it's, uh, and this heel has got to raise. I can't do it. I'm, Right, it's seventy percent paralyzed in this leg. But on the like your spine, a lot of people I know when they think of the spine, although it's in the middle of the body in relationship to the left and right shoulder, it's on the back of the body. All right. See, it, that's kind of a, a a little bit of a misnomer. It's like if it was like in the middle of my body, I'd have to turn like this and like that. Whereas if it, you know, since it's on the back of my body, see, I'm actually kind of turning like this. You, you're turning in like, between that. The spine and the ball with the left side going back, then that's when you turn in front of you. That's an anterior rotation, right? As it's opposed to, as opposed to turning like this and like that. Yeah. See now I'm turning. You only. Well, this is the, It's it's like the, the center swings on the other side of. Yeah. It. You're basing now. You're making your right leg the the post on which your side is turning mm -hmm. instead of an mm -hmm. invisible axis from the spine to the ground. Mm -hmm. So it entails a shift combined with a rotation. Okay. Michael, we've covered the grip, the stance, the measurements, the necessary measurements to get accuracy into a shot. Now we have established the actions of the pivot. And a pivot is a multiple action. It's not just single. It's not just rotation. It's a shift. And it's a turn. But if you to turn now with two feet on the ground, if they stay on there, the body's not going to function like it should. If one leg has to detach to make an axis, like you're going to hang a door on a pole, and this is going to turn anterior in front of you, so they can go back. So to do this, it's necess necessary to have the knees working in this fashion. I'm just dealing now with knees and ankles. I flex the knee, the left knee. Flex means to bend. Flex it. Now, there's very little weight on any part except the ball of the left foot, right? Mm-hmm. Now, 
I extend the right leg, and by extending it, look at my chin. It stayed in the same position from the ground. But if I flex that knee, the my head will drop. Head will drop. And uh, most people are advocating not extending it. But when you extend it, you establish an axle, a straight up and down axle. Then you turn this door to the right, or in front of. So I'm pushing down and out with this knee on an angle. I'm not coming this hip against that hip that blocks. So I'm now transferred here, and now I can turn. Oh, what a free looking yeah. move. You see, the thing of it is, I'm not trying to turn the right hip back. That could break down this axle, understand? Mm -hmm. As far as you're concerned right now, it's the spine and the leg. The, it's consisting of an axle, understand? Right. Now, for that to be in a position of balance, you got to have it, the hip on the outside of the right ankle. Here, my hip's on the inside, but I got a two-foot stance. Now I've got a one. Now so I that just, would be the backswing. That would be the backswing. I've set up like this is a part of my spine. Mm -hmm. This is the bottom part of my spine now. Then I can turn in here, and I got support. But when you got it this way, look what it does. Hmm. So, so what we have to do is shorten the left side. How do you shorten it? Flex this joint. Flex this joint. Now this side can come under. See? Boy, what a beautiful, yeah. just natural move. You see, move. this side could come over. Now the shoulder don't go up that way. It comes under. But it comes that way. Understand? Mm hmm Then this arm, as this shoulder goes out, this arm is coming back. Hmm. Now, to establish this thing, I want you to get the, that rope and show the knee and he, ankle exercise, but we can go into that a little bit later. Let's okay. go into this a little deeper because we're only taking it back to here. Now, what, what happens when you take it back to here? Your hands are the right hand is dorsal flexion, like that. The left arm is turning into a pronated position, and you're doing a radial flexion here. So as you go back, that thumb is pointed up the line from that ball up to that right shoulder, and the right shoulder is turning back that. You're not going up, up the line that you want to go, the ball to go on. You're making a curve. You're dealing now with circles. Mm -hmm. And the only time you can get centrifugal force is with the circle. You have to have a restrainer. When you're throwing something, it, it doesn't have any restraint. It's free. It's in free fight. Mm -hmm. When you have an attached end, you're, you're controlling the size of the circle. Oh, and and only, only then do you create centrifugal force. And it's, that's what we are trying to create to get more power in a golf swing. On, on on the pivot that you're talking about, like to me, this is the, absolutely the most incredible thing that you ever taught me. Yeah. And what is, it's, it's different than, you know, some of the modern day teaching is that it involves three planes of motion as opposed to just one. Yeah. Could you kind of let me explain that just a little bit? Well, you, you see, when you shift this way, that's one plane, right? Now you, you're going this way with this, this leg, like it's coming out in front of that leg. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a bottom part of the spine. The bottom part of the spine is the right leg. But now if you turn this way, where's, your, where's the bottom half of your, your spine? You have no support, right? Mm -hmm. If you have no support, you can't hang a door on anything that will work except the upright. So if you tried to turn your right hip, then your, your initial motion was You're putting was a yourself turn. in a negative position, and it'll cause you to have to loop the club into a figure eight to get to the ball. But a turn, so, like, so if a person, almost everybody that plays golf, has some kind of rotary motion. Yeah, the rotary motion, though, is not the way that it's being taught. It, most of the books will tell you to, to turn your right hip back inside of your right angle. Then if you do, you're standing on your left leg. I've never seen a pitcher pitch off his left foot if he's throwing right-handed. No, he steps on the right and he steps to the left. Now, if you're, you're already here like this, you're on the left, so how can you step? They say the, the longest journey starts with a step. <laughs> the longest journey starts with a step. So I'm stepping over here to the right side, 
and doing an upswing. I'm going to step over to the left side. Now I've got a bottom half of my spine supporting the upper half. Mm -hmm. Now it's not supporting here. There's two hips supporting it, but it has to be one to rotate that right side. So if you if you just had a say like if you just had if you started trying to turn first or turning a rotary motion, your then head your head is swaying. Your head will instinctually and shoulder, even shoulder. if you kept it on there. It would almost be like you said earlier that someone could just might as well come and cut your right leg off because you don't, it negates all the force it's that you're trying none. to wind it's up. It's none. It's just like a, what you call a building destroyer. It's a big hunk of cement on a pendulum. They pull it back and let it go and man, it, it's This motion destroyed. right here? Yeah. Like, a, it's, it's like, a, like the lateral motion. Like these motions when, you know, the people that look, view the tape, when you lift them out, and that they, they become individual motions as opposed to being blended. They look yeah. amplified, don't yeah, they? Yeah. Like if someone was to say, "Well, boy, that looks like a sway." Yeah. You know, if you move like this and it's not accompanied with something. Yeah. Well, what would you do about consistency if it's doing just the opposite? Turn this thing up here. Now your head is going there in the head. There. That's a metronome, and this is a pendulum with your head here. And I move your way to the right. Mm -hmm. Now, now that that leg becomes. Part of your spine. Yeah, it's just one long deal. It's like I start off on a two foot balance, yeah. I shift to a one foot balance. And then, you, then you just swing your arms back from there. Yeah. Up the oblique plane. That turns your shoulders. Right. And then when I'm coming back down though, yeah. now all the slack is out between all the joints at this point. Right. Now you have to get over here. Now you're just like you're going to, a pitcher is going to step over here like this. Now you're coming underhand throw upward. Uh, like so. Yeah. All right. And most everybody got it up here like this and say, I got to come down the ball right that way. If you come that way, you'll swing in around your left leg, you drive the ball into the ground, it won't go anywhere. But the blending of those planes of motion, you have like a, like on the pivot, we have like a little lateral flexion. And then this way, see, my chest can wind up over my right leg. Yeah, that's right. You I, but if I was turning, see, I, I mean, I, it's just be, I'd be back shifting, right? Yeah, you have to do the opposite to get out. And so it's, it's negating the force. So really, the, 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 the initial motion on the backswing has to be a little bit lateral, doesn't it's, it? It's a lateral tilt of the spine. Okay, and it's not like yeah, that. You're shifting your head. Okay, but if I shift over I'm to the right. I'm swinging my spine out from underneath my chin, like that. But it's not one motion, it's a compound motion, well, I'm right? Well, sure, see, the, see, as you're swinging this way, that's the first action. Now look what it's doing. It, it, that's taking my arm down to there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's also making this ilium crest, that's this left hip, cave in underneath the rib cage like that mm -hmm. to establish a one, one plane from your neck down to the ball. Like so. And now see, this is, that leg is the bottom half of the spine. Mm -hmm. Now what have you got here like this? You don't have any support. Mm -hmm. Unless you, but when you, but if I, if I just see, it's not just one move laterally. No. As I turn, see my, as I move just a breath, you know, to the right with yeah. my hip. Yeah. See, as I turn, this left hip moves in towards it between moves the, the ball. hand and arm and shoulder to, out toward the ball. And it's kind of a retro motion, isn't it? Well, you don't get retro until you got over to here. All right. Now look here. I'm coming here, and I turn to here. Now, the, the, as you go up the swing, now look here. My hip. My hip is on the outside of my leg, and I can stand at one leg. I'm 70 percent loss of well, motion in that leg. Due to a stroke well, three years ago. Yeah, there I'm here. Now, unless unless you have a spine that goes from your, this is the sternum slot right down here to that leg, you don't have any chance of hitting the ball with any consistency. Mm -hmm. So another thing too, like you see a lot of golf injuries. You know, if you're in a flex knee position. Yeah. The only thing, like if I'm flexing my knees, here, watch out here, Michael. Uh, if I'm flexing my knees like this and I try to turn like this, I don't have any support for my upper body. Well, you're I? spinning on the bottom of your spine. Like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Now, you, your position of power is in the negative position. Okay, so if I did this, this would, this would explain why a lot of people take that fourth and fifth lumbar and just have tremendous... Tear it right up. Tear, because that's what, but it, when we work our knees like this, there's no pressure on it. There's no pressure. How about a 500-pound sack of sugar on I there? I used to hold four 200-pound men on my shoulders. 
And if I stood up there with the, my knees flexed, there's no way. I'd, I'd let him climb up on me. Just, and just stack up. And I'm standing here like this with my hamstrings, the quadriceps in a locked position. Mm -hmm. All of this, the postulate, they sheep, all these four muscles coming together here. But if they're loose like, like that, nothing. You have no balance. Mm -hmm. But the one thing, like the blend. The whole key to the swing is making a single spine from your. This is the sternum slot here. Mm -hmm. Now that, there's a single spine. All right, show them the spine on my back. Okay. All right, here's the yeah. spine, and yeah. so we're going to be right there. Yeah. Now, from here down that leg is one. One. It's like a pole, isn't it? That's exactly. And this, this is like a gate turning in to your right leg. So if we had a... So I, one thing that the lateral or the pendulum motion, you know, the shift of weight laterally through the hips does, it keeps us from ever going backwards. Yeah, and it? then that raises the left shoulder, drops the right. Ooh. See, Mike, the most important aspect of a golf swing is having the bottom half of the spine coinciding with the upper half. Now, how do you make it coincide? You have to let the spine do a lateral flexion from this sternum slot like this. Now, so, I have a line from right there to the ball. So you're saying that your spine works all the way down on to the... On a A-frame. Right. On an A-frame, okay. like that. Now, this turns. And when this when this starts turning, this starts retroing. If you retro first, you you never get it, understand? To show them, show the people that from the back side of me. Put it, put it underneath there, put it behind. Okay, you put it behind. Yeah, you, know, you put it behind your back. All right. Put your arms behind it. All right. Now I'm gonna do it with you. Okay. Now watch me tilt the hips. The left hip is concaving and moving underneath this 12th rib here, like that. The right hip is, is now extending and this right hip is raising now he has a line. Hold it there. I'm gonna get another club. He has a line basically from there to there. Now you got the support. That's a look it's a little curve. But you have a one support leg holding up the same, so you feel like it's that way. Not this way. It's slanting, tilting. Then now at this point, just turn your arms, and now the back is to the target, and your left shoulder is tilted toward the ball. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now you're winding up this leg here. Well, let me show you something. Go back. Now when you turn your shoulders, it winds up this thigh, but it doesn't pull your hip over into a negative position. Mm-hmm. You're way to be on the wrong foot and you can't hit it from that foot. So if we did it from the front, yeah. It would be like that. Now turn your shoulders a little bit. See now I can now, wind that now chest up right you, over that. You see you have a support of the spine, right? Without moving my head to the right too. Right. Now it's hit this way first. And when that when this hip turns in, it pulls this hip back, but it doesn't put it in a negative position. Now that, that knee's gotta go out. That way. Mm -hmm. You push down and out on a bias. Mm -hmm. It creates a, the rotation of the right side. This, that action. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that. the hip, I'm actually work on the on the downswing with the pivot. The I'm actually left, pushing the hip down and the knee and the, the and knee out. Can, pushing the hip down with the with that gluteus maximus and minimus muscle. And you're, oh. look here, you're flexing the knee, which is bending the knee by contracting the rectus, the, this is femoris flexor. Mm -hmm. Now and you made a statement to me that blew me away about what the left hip, how the left hip, I never try to get my left hip out of the way. Let me show you it something. out of the way. This, that was an incredible, incredible statement. You wouldn't, believe, that. you wouldn't believe it. But if you put me your hip right here and I came at you like this, I can knock you down. Hmm. Boom. Okay. But I have to pick up my foot to do it. Right. Now my whole weight is is going into you. Right. The center of gravity is going into you. When I when I concave this right side, convex the right. But this leg is, I can't do it. I try to do it with this leg. All right. 
like that. It's coming. The leg is coming on this line. Mm -hmm. Okay. But on. But if, if I if I like like we were talking about, you know, I'm going to shift over to my right okay. foot, and my head still still Central right line. between my feet. Okay, and when I come back to the ball, I'm never ever trying to turn that left hip out of the way. Well, it's just like stepping to second base and throwing to the catcher. Your pivot has negated the hand action. Mm -hmm. So what I'd have to do is, is like I'm a shift, and so when I come back to the ball, see, I'm actually shifting to right here, and the right side is driving around. Uh, and oh, right. yes, that's a door closing. Instead of this motion that's right there. That's backing off, and your head is out of position. You hit it further far, they just hit it with your ear that way. Mm -hmm. Because that's what's getting all the force. So you're just saying, basically, once I set up to the golf ball, the, sh the weight shift and the support mechanism is like a post. If I was going to plant a post in the ground, I'm just going to stick a post in the ground. I'm just going to let my... Move against uh, it. Move, move against it. This move. is the gate. Yeah. And I'm just going to shift over. Yeah. And that's the gate. And when I come back down, see... I'm going to shift to here, yeah. and then this will be the gate. Yeah. But you wouldn't ever bend the pole to no, open the no. gate, would you? No, sir. Yeah. Out there and coming across the ball, you know, outside hmm. in swing. Now, what was the drills that we talked about doing? I want to get the knee drill. All right. That's where you, where you're standing here. Now, I'm working now with just knees, understand? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, and ankles. Now, See, I'm gonna. I, I'm right now. The legs are asleep. Now I'm I'm doing that, but for that to go, I got to shift that hip a little better. See. Mm -hmm. Now I come this way. I got to shift the hip to get the weight off of this right foot, so I can bend that knee. Understand? Mm -hmm. So we're doing that. We're separating the knees. I don't bring the knees together. I push one knee out and pull the other back. I'm doing like like this. Look. Now this is me and, and hip. One, two, one, two. The leg won't work. You come mm -hmm. on. Like this. Yeah. Now like don't that. don't do your knees that way. Like that. No. Don't 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 make the knee go that way. Make it go out. Out you know, out on the angle. Oh, you mean in the golf swing? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Like that, like mm -hmm. that. That's the Super angle. Doobie. Yeah. <laughs> now you add the the body to that when you get on this leg. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, what's incredible about that is the ankles and the knees are moving the torso. Exactly. And when you're moving your knees, it's real important that, you know, like when the knee, the knee just simply, it just pulls underneath the hip. It doesn't pull the hip back and you go with it, right? No. It's like, it's a very, it's just like walking, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Just exactly like walking. So if I took a step, all I'm doing is really just pulling that knee right underneath yeah. the hip, yeah. right? Right. All right, Michael. Yeah. Let this knee work on this line here. Because that gives you the rotation, you know. You, you made a little X here. Yeah. And so what we're going to do is just kind of show exactly the flow of different parts of the body, right? Yes. All right. So my first move would be my, shift, the hip. Yeah, shift over the right leg and drop oh, it. Yeah, like that, that. Right, like that. That lets the right shoulder stay on and the left shoulder stay on the plane. You it's a free motion, isn't it? Boom. Very free. Oh, because boy. You, because so you, explain what you meant by attached and detached. Now... If you stand there, there right now and, two feet. and grab the ground with both feet, you're, you're all that's going to move is your head. Nothing going to move. you got to have a detached end and an attached end. For a door to swing, if you put two hinges on it and lock them, nothing can move, right? Right. But if you have just a pair of hinges on one side, then you can open it if the pole is straight up. So the sensation that I'm getting, you know, I'm in my dress sufficient, is that my left side is almost becoming detached, or it's a, like a swinging type motion. Yeah, it's a, like a gate, swinging on its pull. Which we talked about which on the Which a score. half a half is your spine, a little half is your right leg. Right. Boy, that's, man, that feels so good. Yeah. Look at that. And my head's not moving to the right yeah. at all. You're keeping so your shift center. Just like so, right? Your swing circle center is stationary. It's perfect. And then on the way, ba on the way back, see... Just reverse it. It's just reverse it, but a little bit bigger lateral motion. Well, right? Yeah, because you start at the center and go to the back. Now you go from the back all the way to the front. Mm. Well, that winds up that right yeah, hip. Yeah, doesn't it? yeah. All right, so when I come back down, I'm going to shift. See I'm that gonna... heel raising, extending this ankle, flexing this knee, flexing this hip joint. That's and pushing a, down the right hip. And push down with that thigh and on that line. Way. See how that 
that's going on that line. Don't you see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look. Boom. Right there. See, that causes a rotation. The other is a shift. Okay. So, when I'm shifting, I'm just going to shift to here. Hey, don't, you don't let your head go back. Just okay. hold the chin steady right there. Let yeah, the right. shoulder come back to it that way. Right there. Then the arm is turning that way. You see? Mm -hmm. And then when I come back down, see, I'm just going to push that hip down. No, push this hip. Not, no, push your not, right hip. Not laterally. No, push your right hip out. Out. And your left hip straight out. Straight, straight, from mm. heel to heel. Okay. And pull the kneecap back in the joint. Okay, so that would be what we're talking about. This is the lateral aspect. Yeah, that's a of, single motion. Now, now that's a single motion. Yeah, and then this, adding this is a compound like action. Hmm. So if I, I, I'm shit. Okay. Now this would be a single motion. Yeah. So my left, my left hip is actually outside my ankle line. Yeah. And as I close the upper body, it it, it move back or ret retract so a little bit over here. It's so like it, a, it go to here, and, and then, then it kind of almost back shifts a little. You understand? In most pictures that I've seen, you know, it looks like they're like that. Yeah, it's no yeah. good. It's two motions, right? Look, we're going to shift and turn. Yeah. Shift, shift and turn. But and look, turn. At, don't don't put the right hip this way. Put the right hip that way. You okay. It shift. The right hip shifts. It shift along it, that it, line, it, not it, a lateral line. No, the right hip don't go lateral. It goes a bias. You know, diagonal. What a great teaching point. Now. For example, if I didn't do that, let's just say that I kept this left hip. You know what's incredible, too, is, you know, like if I'm hitting the ball out here and I, we shift and I turn, man, my hips are, you know, my hips have only moved about 15 or 20 degrees, haven't they? That's right. But what, what you've done, you've established an axis to rotate your arms on. Mm-hmm. Understand? But if I just, if I didn't let this left hip move a little bit, I'd have to move this way, wouldn't yeah, I? Right. I'd have to go... Like With this. The upper half moves instead of the lower. Right. Had no foundation. The, so this way it's all blended together. Yeah. Whew. Okay. And when I come back to the ball, if I didn't pick up my right hand and get yeah. off my right side, and make that, 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 I'd be back here. Yeah, with you're, that's, that's non shifting. That's falling back with your head. Boom. Now hold your head there until your right shoulder comes underneath the chin. I'm right there. Yeah. Now you come up. Hmm. Yeah. This enables me to get a lot more. Extension like my, in the arms and that leg force. It gets the lats and the and the buttocks and every the muscle in your body is moving with that action. <clears throat> yes, that feels good. That way. Wow. Now you got something to stand on. Mm -hmm. You got foundation. All right. Boy, that is beautiful. Now, uh, since we're talking about the initial motion, you know it's a really incredible point what you were talking about how we're building a foundation. You know, yeah. we learn how to put our hands on it, we measure it. Uh, we talked about the line loft lee, but you're actually starting the golf swing from the ground up, aren't you? Right. The ankles and the knees. And which so makes, it's, it makes the torso work. You don't work from the shoulders. The shoulders are a secondary force. Yeah, like a shoulder, like, like, like the example that you showed me one time. If I took a ball, I could just throw it, and the shoulders would just basically follow the ball. Yeah. yeah. They're not what you call a primary force. Yeah. They're a secondary if, or an accompanying if force. If you try to make the arm swing from the shoulder, you're taking one, taking a three-level <laughs> beating. You don't have this lever, you don't have this lever, nor anything in the shoulders there, okay? All right, now, since we're talking about the initial motion of the golf swing, what, you know, like today we were working on in something, we talked about a one, two, three count, well, that's, and a one, that's and a, a tempo. two. You see, a lot of people, most of the pros use a two count. Right. And it's, it's, each one of the counts are one second. They, they make their address and they go one, Two, it's like 1,001, 1,001 the second. So you go, that's a two count. Like like in music, you have a two, two count, three, four count, or six, eight count. Now we're using, a th I use a three count. I use an extra count because I press right. in with my knee to give me a running start for a back swing. Okay, let's demonstrate that. Now a two now, count would be, okay, I'm sitting here. Yeah. Now here's my dress position. Yeah. Okay, now, a two count would be, Nothing happening before the club's put in motion, right? Right. I'm just going to go one, yeah. two, right? Now, there's nothing wrong with that, only that it doesn't give you the activity of the feet that you get with a three count. Oh, I love that. I mean, you know, you need something to do with your feet. Yeah. And, you know, like the count that we use and what you're talking about is like once I set up. Yeah. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you do the three counts. Okay. And I'm going to push your knee in, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm going to, like that, I push in, and now your arms go forward. Now, as I come back, you push my knee out of the way, and get your hands cocked as you, as you okay. start back down. I push, now cock the club. 
Yeah. Now All you right. knock me out. Let's see. Okay. Now this. Do it again. Do it again. Okay. Nick him. One, two, three. Mm-hmm. That's a waltz count. One, One two, two, three. But see what that does too. It also, it's kind of a settling thing too. It gives like a trigger. Like Nicholas, he'll turn his head, or everybody's got something to jump start their swing. And under, you know, a lot of competition, you need something to kind of relax your body a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So you take the tensions out of the shoulders. That's what I'm doing because I don't want that the primary force. I get the greatest turn you can too if you do that. Now, when you come back, don't keep, don't keep your right arm locked to your pec. When this pec pull this left arm in, this, I'm doing this left-handed, you know, mm -hmm. like that. This shoulder blade pulls away from the spine, this one goes back, but it won't go back if you hold this arm this way. Mm -hmm. You gotta let the humerus bone get to there so the arm's in this position. Here's a shot putt. Mm -hmm. You can't take a golf ball and throw it actually 50 feet in there. Throw this thing a, a mile that way. You know, I can hold <clears throat> Yeah. Throw a baseball from outfield to the catcher. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see you do that now. Okay, so you're talking about the right arm. The right arm, yeah. Okay, okay, we're going to set up. Yeah, no, just I'm going to do, do it this. individually. Now, go ahead now. One, One two. two. Now, the arm is here. It isn't here. Yeah, we're not packing the arm or the elbow into yeah. it, right? Yeah. No. It swings away. Then that gives me a straight left arm. You pack it, you bowl your left arm. We'll discuss the plane. Now, the plane is a line from the base of the neck. That's a, you've got seven cervical from the skull. Yeah, right back here. To the bottom of the neck. Mm -hmm. And you draw a line from that line from the seventh circle right through the sternum slot right down to the bowl. Okay, so this would be like a horizontal plane. Yeah. And that would be like a vertical plane. Yes. And this is the plane that we want the golf plane yes, to be on. Yes, that's the right. oblique. The oblique plane and, and the position of the oblique plane. Just put it around your shoulders and hold it there. Okay. You put your hands out and take that, that club just like that. Huh? All take right. the club. Yeah. No, no, put it back there. In the middle? Okay. Yeah. Now shift and turn and watch it go right around that plane. No, take the club out of your hand. All right. That way. Now go the other way. See, there's no wobble in that plane, right? Mm-hmm. Boom. Huh? Boom. That's the path of the shaft. Yeah, get here and forward now. Let it face the camera and do that now. Okay? Right there? Yeah. Now yeah. see, the right shoulder is lower than the left. The whole right side is coming underneath the spine. Right. What a great point. Go ahead and do that. Huh? No. Up huh. that center. Get it centered. There. Go. There. Now that's you've got a plane there, haven't you? Yeah. That, that's, the, that's the plane we're trying yeah, to establish. Yeah, you see it. You don't know how pretty that looks. Well, I probably do. <laughs> <laughs> right there. That's the, that's the key to consistency with direction, direction and distance. If you don't have control of the plane, and the foundation under you, you never play golf. Mm -hmm. So we're you, talking... You play at it, you don't play at you don't play it. Mm -hmm. So if you took that same plane, and I established my address position... Now I'm okay. cocking, I'm cocking my hands, but I'm turning the left arm by pronating it. Uh -huh. And I'm doing a radio flexion, I pronate and radio flex, okay? The left right. hand. But when and, I... When, I'm know, when you do that, your dorsal flex. The right hand, and then it'll establish the plane of the the club, because mm -hmm. that's the only thing that swings constantly on plane. Understand? Right. The other things, you, you don't hit it one-handed, one arm like this. You would. You'd have one plane, but you're hitting with two arms. You're swinging in now because double force. You have to go in between the wrist and the elbows to to get a double force. Understand? Mm -hmm. But if you're going with this, you're not doing anything with that. So, Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes all the sense in the world. When you take, okay, so I'm setting up, and we got like our flight line, you yeah. know, which is a straight line. But after that, there's no more straight line. You don't ever there. look at that flight line. Look at the ball. It's a curve. It's not a line. Now, why is that? Well, because they have two motions. They have lateral shift and the turn of the shoulders, and they're perpendicular. If you stand up here, face the ball, you can move your arms. Look here. From the target. To the target. Now, you, your arms are now in front of you, right? Mm-hmm. 
when your shoulders are like that, but you're on this foot and you're like this. Now, if you try to come down this way, you'd hit your body. But you got to come into the thing, put back what you took out. I'm taking that much away from the swing. I got to go this way, not that way. You understand? Mm -hmm. You got to so, come. So if you took a, for example, like on the takeaway, like I would never try to keep it long on a straight line, would I? Your head's going to move if you do. Yeah, see if I, but see, this wouldn't be extension. That would be extension. Yeah, let the arm come off. Okay. The, yeah, pick up the elbow this way. Mm -hmm. Pick and swing the, the humerus bone. The humerus bone is a bone from my shoulder down to the elbow. I'm doing this with it. I ain't going to stay here and try to shut put it. Like this. I'm getting it a little bit too much like that. Yeah, you're trying to work okay. it with it. As opposed to letting it be free. Aye, that's going to turn your shoulders. So the right arm, what it's, we're trying to do with the right arm, right hand. You get it like you're going to throw a ball. Yeah, and, and so, but the, the elbow. Underneath it. Would always be. Underneath. Underneath the hand. Now, if you do like this, you're doing like. Nicholas used to do. He he get the arm horizontal here uh -huh. instead of vertical. Right. Okay. Like so. Okay. Let's see, I'm more like just like that. Right. Oh man! Now you can throw that thing. It's a very natural type yeah. throwing thing. Okay. All right. See the the forward swing is basically a throw. You know. Mm -hmm. So all yeah. we're really doing is you're just establishing that plane, and we're trying to keep that blade perpendicular or square to that line right there. Right. No sir. No sir. The no? blade opens up. Huh? When you turn the club like this, look here, let me have the club. All right. I ain't trying to keep the club like that. No. It opens up 90 degrees. Comes like that, and the face is facing up, one, not that way. Okay. Now, look here, it opens up. Now, the, as you swing the shaft around the shoulders at the ball like that, you also have to turn the club head around the shaft. Mm -hmm. Then that, this is controlling the direction of the ball, this rotation of the club head around the shaft while the shaft is rotating around your shoulder. Now do that for me. Okay. okay. Now you pronate the left hand and cock the left thumb. Mm -hmm. right. Now right off that ball, that, that way. Now, but I'll let your body move with mm -hmm. it. I'm going to do it from the front view here. Watch mm -hmm. me. Don't hit my knee. Don't hit me. Don't I hit me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, the, the club is brought in. Yes, it's a big... Yes, you know, it, 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 take it. No, take it in deeply. Right. So we're trying to get the club head back behind us. Yeah. I don't want the club in front of you. In front of us. So you never want like that no. and like that. No, sir. We're trying to get that club head back behind so us. So you can hit it between the elbows. I can hit between the elbows and the wrist now. Mm -hmm. I can hit it. You'll get it this way. You're above it. it. You're all the time You're above. off your plane. There's no plane there at all. you got a plane here instead of plane there. You've got the, the plane on here instead of there. So if I was looking at it like this. Just get the cup. That now, would be wrong. incorrect. Okay. That, now you're stacking the right hand on top of the left right. hand. So, now okay. you've got, you got to have your right hand behind the left hand. Now probably the most critical angle in and the now, initial. At this, this position right here, the shaft is actually parallel to your shoulders. This position right here. Oh, well, you've got this and that. Right there and there. No. No, sir. This. That's the shaft. Right. So get the shaft. Right. Now your shoulders are parallel to the shaft. Right. Now if you get this, that's not parallel to the shaft. So this would mean like if you're taking it away, your club would be going out and your shoulders would be turning back. Yeah, but then they off balance. You can't do it that way because they got the, you tear up the wheel because your spoke is going one one direction. You know while the hub is going another. Hmm. Incredible. Huh? So never ever, you know, if my shoulders are turning. I can't ever be out that you way. You've got to get behind that right shoulder. Got, never get there. Get the club behind that right shoulder. Boom. We've got to be right there. Yeah. And now, if you stood up from right there, the club will be horizontal. So if I took it and I was in a correct position, I'd be right here, and then if I ever wanted to check it, I could just raise up, yeah. and it'd be in a perfect horizontal position, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. if I wanted to check it the other way, I could just take it right out in front of me and do that, bend over. Now turn. And turn, perfect position, right? Yeah. Well, I'm going to show you how you keep the club on plane. Hold okay. it. Now your left arm is one, the left hand is one arm length below your shoulders. Right. Now if you pick this up, you're on that plane. But if you keep this thing like you have a compass and just turn around here, now it comes up that way, doesn't come up this way. Now let me take your hands back into position. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. 
Now look here, if you change anything in this way or that way, you're going to destroy the plane. Now that has got to come in that way. Now it's coming around your hip, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now instead of continue around that way, it starts up. Don't. No, let me take you. I'm going to turn right. your shoulders. Now straighten up. Stand up. Do that again. This is just like old times, isn't it? <laughs> we have passion in our <laughs> golf lessons. <laughs> All right. Do it. All right, next. Let's see. All right. Now the hands are still below your hip, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I mean, below your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Now at this point, instead of lifting this way, lift that way. All right. That's the way the shoulders are turning. I see. So I've been. So we're taking it, and I've been. No, getting don't up. don't come up. Oh, I know. I'm trying to show them the difference between a good one and a bad. Never that. No. There. That's oh. it. Now, that gives it that one. You're on plane. You see, if you can't keep that shaft on plane, you can't hit the ball where you want to hit it. Hmm. And, and if you raise, I'm not raising my arm, I'm not changing the space between my leg and the, the ball is staying here, it's coming around here. Now instead of raising up this way, it raises that way and it turns your shoulders. So the arms and the body, when I set up, they're the same all the time. I yeah. just sit here in that little peck, we're just taking it. All right, now. Right there. Yeah, and if you come up towards your shoulder, you're outside, you're above the plane, okay? So here we go. Ah, right, now, now, now turn up now. Just Boom. Be, now come up now. There. Boom. Okay, here we go. Uh -huh. This way, right like that. Now, instead of letting the arm go this way, let the arm just come on back around and like that to turn your shoulders. And that keeps your measurement. It keeps everything. It's just a constant measure, a mean measure between your wrist and your sternum slot. That's like a mean mm -hmm. radius? Yeah, mean radius. That position. Yeah. Instead of going up and back, yeah. I'd yeah. be able to that's, yeah. preserve it. Right? Yeah, that's super. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Let's go ahead and hit this one this way here. Mm -hmm. But be sure you set that, that shaft. Now, your, your hand, your right hand is almost down at your right knee when you dress the ball. Mm -hmm. Now, you go from in an elevator from the first floor to the second floor before you go to the third, don't you? I don't do that. All right, that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the hands, I'm breaking hands in that way. I'm not breaking the arms in. I'm breaking the shaft in. Okay. So I don't, I, even though it, sometimes it gives the appearance of being like inside, it's actually just falling exactly. The, the club head is going inside. Right. Okay. And you're rotating around the plane that you address the ball on. But I don't pull it into no, me. No, I don't pull it in. The, I'd change the measurement. Yeah, it? then you'd have a small circle. Yeah, that way. That way, that is super. Now go ahead and hit it. There's a little bit of energy. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me have a ball. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't have... <laughs> any feeling at all in this leg. And I may fall, I don't know. But I'm not gonna take it this way. My shoulder's turning that way. The hands have gotta go away, the shoulders are turning. And if you do that, the shaft, you cock that wrist into radio flexion. Face the camera and show that from a side view. That's an incredible position. Hit it that way. Mm -hmm. my, my legs, not, you can't see any uh -huh. leg action because- Show them what you mean by the shoulders. Watch this. See the shoulders turning this way. That club has got to go the way that shoulder turns. So turning. it's just almost following the right shoulder back. Yeah, right. But it's one arm length low. It's on this plane, and the club head is on that plane. Mm -hmm. huh. So wa watch this. Now, it's too bad I stand out here this long, and both legs are almost asleep. Boom. Amazing. See, I can't use my body. I just hit it with the arm. Yeah. You know? But the most critical point, like, and another thing, like when we're doing this, here we go, Michael. Watch out for the Billy here. All right, we set up, we hit it, and we turn back, and see, like, really right here, once we yeah. get the club to right there, yeah. you just turn your body down. Yeah, we turn, raise the arms. Raise yeah. the, you, no, not that way. Well, I'm... Look here. Raise it the way the, the shoulder's turning. That way. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Huh? Okay. Okay. All right. Now, face that street out there and do it so you can get a side view. Okay? Right there. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, the hands are working around this hip. Now, this is the basement. First floor, second floor is behind the hip. Working around it. Yeah, right, right. Okay. Underneath it. Underneath it. Okay. Ah, 